Well, week three, huh? We're a month into the season. Technically, technically, this is week four. Technically, but you know, week zero is still a thing. Um, and we learned a lot last week in the college football. But you know, what did what didn't we learn? What didn't we learn? I mean, there's a whole lot of things that could go right, that could go wrong throughout the rest of the year. But it's looking wild already, and I cannot wait um, to you know keep on going with it this year. We we got a lot of stuff land for this channel and for the FCS let's talk about them first if you want to watch Rhode Island Delaware you gotta pay for flow sports we all know flow sports is terrible that's why a lot of teams have consistently started to move away from it like UMass Mexico State I believe they're starting to move away from it you know like a lot of teams that are on flow sports I know the CAA is pretty unhappy right now that's why James Madison that's one of the reasons why James Madison left in the first place is because flow sports is terrible but you know I, I, I do I do not want to pay for flow sports and I do not want to find a stream but whoever does find a stream you got a top 25 FCS matchup in Rhode Island Delaware there are a couple of games between FCS and FBS opponents that you need to be, you know, in tuned about. We'll talk about one of them later. Um, but the first is North Dakota State, Arizona. <laughs> Gotta watch out for that one. Arizona did not look good last week against Mississippi State. In fact, they got beat up pretty bad. Um, and North Dakota State's looking to continue that winning streak and continue moving along as the number one team in the FCS. So, uh, you know that that's gonna be a big one to watch if you want to watch something late at night so that's in Arizona that game is gonna pick off at like 11 Eastern yeah you know, like 10 o'clock at night you know so there you go and for the other games again you know it, it's the same old stuff as usual for the first couple weeks of the season you know like Youngstown State's taking on Kentucky Texas State's taking on Baylor you know, Blake Shapin needs to pass the ball more in Kentucky. They just want to keep the ball rolling as they head into Florida. You know, head into that Florida game. J.J. McCarthy's going to start for Michigan against UConn. Uh, UConn is not completely terrible. They're still pretty bad, but, you know, not completely terrible anymore. You know, Alabama has to get some work on that O-line. And, and those wide receivers need to do more, you know, like... I don't think ULM is going to show us anything, you know, with those two problems right there. Because Bryce Young can't bail you out every single time. This is not this is not Russell Wilson on the Seahawks. This is Bryce Young at Alabama, a top three ranked Alabama. And they're number three for a reason. You know, they did not look good, you know, against Texas. And we'll talk about Texas in a moment. I'm pretty, I'm actually quite angry about this. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Liberty taking on Wake Forest. Now, the Demon Deacons do need to watch out for Kadon Salter. He, and I wonder if Sam Hartman can keep it going. He's, you know, or is it Kaidon Salter? I hope I'm saying that name correctly. If, it, if I'm not, I'm usually wrong at saying names. Anyway, he's a dual threat. He's been leading the Flames at a good pace this year. You know, uh, Toledo's taking on Ohio State in a primetime game over the air on Fox. I don't know why that's been chosen as an over the air game, but whatever. You wonder who's going to appear as key players for the Buckeyes. You know, you got Jackson Smith and Jibba. You know, he should be coming back. You know, a lot of other guys should be coming back for Ohio State. You know, you wonder how things are going to go for the Buckeyes. Akron's ticket on Tennessee. Um, again, Tennessee trying to keep up the momentum. I don't know why I said Kentucky going to Florida. I meant Tennessee going to Florida because, you know, Tennessee and Florida are taking on each other in a matchup on the 24th, which is the week after this. And the balls, you know, again, this is an Akron team that got shut out last week against Michigan State. They're just here for that money. You can't lose to Akron, Tennessee. You can't. You can't right now. You really can't. Um, UAPB, Arkansas Pine Bluff against Oklahoma State. Now that should be pretty easy for him. Bobby Petrito going back to his old stomping ground in Arkansas, but I'm sure KJ Jefferson and company do not care. 
Um, this Missouri State is a top five FCS team, ranked in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. You know, the best conference in the FCS, comparable to the SEC in the FBS, as we all know by now. But uh, you know, I think Arkansas will be just a little bit too much for the Bears in this game. You know, you got Florida taking on USF again. Their matchup with Tennessee is the week after this. So, you know, this is the South Florida team that gave up like 50 points to BYU. So, Anthony Richardson, he should have a bounce back day. And then you have Pitt going on the road to Western Michigan. And you wonder who the quarterback's going to be for Pitt. You wonder if Western Michigan can beat Pitt again. Because remember, Pitt lost to Western Michigan last year. That knocked them out the playoff hunt as it should. You know, they had two losses last year. And, you know, one of them was a bad loss, like a really bad loss to Western Michigan. That shouldn't have even happened in the first place, but, you know, it happened. Louisiana Tech is taking on Clemson. You wonder if DJ Uwilakalele can, you know, keep up the momentum. And, um, you know, there's also San Diego State and Utah. You wonder if Utah can bounce back because, I mean, they got to capitalize on the results in front of them. And the Aztecs have not looked great to start the year. They got beat up by Arizona pretty bad, so that should tell you a lot. Jake Hayner from Fresno State, they're going to take on USC. Oh boy. They, oh boy, this might be actually something real interesting. It might be really spicy. You know, with the way Fresno State, Oregon State, in last week. And, uh, you know, the Trojans are going to have to take a little caution with the Bulldogs here. I wonder, you know, Caleb Williams and the offense can go, but this defense, I'm always going to be worried about. I'm going to be worried about it throughout the season. Uh, I mean, Stanford, you know, messed up opportunities inside the 10 and stuff like that. This is not Fresno, or rather, this is not Stanford. This is Fresno, Fresno State. They can ball, they can ball, and they beat UCLA, you know, very late game last year. That was really, really fun. And I hope we get that fun time here in this game. So, you're probably wondering, what about the Longhorns? Yeah, they're ranked. Taking on UTSA. I don't know why they're ranked. Everybody has them ranked. Like, every single major selector, you know, from opinionated polls, from, you know, people that are famous on YouTube, to the actual polls having Texas ranked. I don't know why. I really don't. They did not beat Alabama. They didn't. I, I already talked about this during the week two recap. They did not beat Alabama. They did not. They should be right. Marshall should be. Uh, honestly, you know, there, there there should be some other teams that should be right right now. I wouldn't say App State because they did lose to North Carolina, so I'd say North Carolina should be right. A and M should not be right, but we'll talk about them, you know, in a moment. And uh, I ju I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, the defense showed some signs of major improvement against Alabama, but this Texas team is banged up. You have Hudson Card out, potentially, and it looks like Roshan Johnson might be the guy. You know, you know, Quinn Ewers, he's out at least until the Red River game. You know, B. John Robinson, he's banged up a little bit, too. You know, you got, you got everybody banged up for Texas, you know. Yeah, they should be UTSA. They should, but UTSA already scared a Houston team that lost to Texas Tech last. This is this is not going to be easy. No game is easy, and I'm going to be laughing if we lose this game. I'm going to be laughing. I really am because you know we should not be ranked right now. We really shouldn't. Uh, I'm also going to cry, but I'm going to laugh too. If we lose against UTSA, I'm going to laugh, I'm going to cry, I'm going to have all the seven stages of grief or whatever. Or is it like five stages? I don't know. But it is what it is there. It's fine. It's fine. We can get through this. Um, there's not a lot in the noon window. So if you want to, you know, if you want to chillax a little bit until the afternoon, you got Oklahoma, Nebraska to tide you over as Scott Frost has been fired. Mickey Jones is the first black head coach in all of Nebraska sports, so you wonder if he could get Casey Thompson to burn the OU defense like he did last year 
in the Red River game. You know, Dylan Gabriel's looking fine out there. He's looking pretty good. He's, this is a team with a more of a pulse. And I wonder, can Nebraska combat the Sooners' offense at all? We'll see. We will see. Georgia's the number one team in the country, as they should be. They're taking on South Carolina. You wonder if Spencer Rattler can step up against this dog's defense. And Stetson Bennett, who's been on fire the first two weeks of the season. You know, he's thrown for 600 yards, 300 yards in each game. He's thrown for multiple touchdowns in each game. He's looking like... He's looking, he's looking like them, you know, the Nick Saban led quarterbacks for years, you know, just looking damn good out there, and, and you know, just flaunting the success of being the number one team in the country, you know. This this game may not even be close. In fact, the spread for this one's like twenty four and a half or whatever. So I don't know how this is gonna go for South Carolina. You know, they gotta play better than they did last week against the Hogs. Then you get to the afternoon games. You got BYU, Oregon. Don't know why Oregon's ranked. This is important though for BYU, so I have it highlighted along with the Oklahoma Nebraska game. Cougs defense legit. You wonder if they can scare off Bo Nix. You know, Jaron Hall and company, they're looking to have a really nice day. You know, BYU had, well, had, didn't have their top two wide receivers. I wonder if they're going to be back for this game. I'm not sure because I didn't look at that. But uh, BYU, uh, if they continue down this path, they're going to be ranked in the top 10. Hell, they might be top 5 before the end of the season is done if they can keep this type of momentum up. We'll see what this game entails. There's also Ole Miss Georgia Tech in the afternoon. Jared Ivey returns back to Georgia Tech. You wonder who's going to start for the Rebels, however. Is it going to be Luke Altmaier? Is it going to be Jackson Dart? We'll see what Lane Kiffin decide says Jeff Collins your hot seat you're on a hot seat and it's getting warmer and warmer like the yellow jackets are showing promise but can they show it you know a little bit more promise against Ole Miss you know they got overwhelmed by clubs in the end but they gotta show more fight than this we'll see what they can do Penn State Auburn next highlighted game possibly the game of the week as Sean Clifford and the Nittany Lions head down to Auburn for a rematch from the game from last year, which was a thriller early in the season last season. At Auburn, they got T.J. Fidley leading, you know, the team at quarterback Tank Bigsby in the backfield still to help Penn State. They've got Nick Singleton at running back, and you wonder who's going to get the signature win. Is it going to be Brian Harson or is it going to be James Franklin? Both these teams are looking for a major win to start the season off. And this could propel them in a better direction. We'll see what this entails for Penn State and Auburn. Auburn's wearing orange uniforms for this game too, so you know it's going to be weird. In the evening, you know, all three of these, you know, games here are highlighted as, you know, honestly, again, I think Penn State Auburn should be the game of the week. But, you know, there's some com there, all three of these matchups in the evening are very, very compelling. Texas Tech, NC State. NC State needs to get this win pretty badly. They need to get a win badly. You know, they struggled the first week of the season. They they picked back up against Charleston Southern. You know, they struggled with ECU. They got to win this game against Donovan Smith, the Red Raiders. Devin Leary, he's got to lead the Wolf Pack, you know, down a path. Of the, you know, not destruction, but hopefulness. You cannot go down a path of destruction. You know, yeah, and and not and not the good kind. I'm talking the bad kind of destruction. You know, where you just self destruct and don't do anything to save yourself. And NC State, they have important games coming. They gotta win this one against a stingy tech team. They gotta win this one. Michigan State. At number 11, they take on Washington in Washington. So in Seattle is Michael Penix Jr. Oh boy, that man who's been you know, you know, first made famous for that diving touchdown play against Penn State a few years back. The Huskies they stay home and take on the visiting Spartans, led by Peyton Thorn, and new head coach at Washington, Kalen DeBoer. 
who was formerly the head coach at Fresno State. What does he have cooked up for Michigan State? Both these teams have some good running attacks. And, you know, whoever's going to win this game is going to win it in the trenches. You know, both these offensive lines know how to go. Defenses, you know, they're both pretty good too. But we'll see. You know, this is the first litmus test for both of these squads. So we'll see what in the world this game entails. And then last, but certainly not least, Miami, Texas A&M. Don't know why A&M is ranked at this point. You know, Haynes King, Tyler Van Dyke, you know, they're going to battle it out. You know, you got Devonna Acne in the backfield for Texas A&M. Uh, you know, you got Parrish Jr. from Miami in the backfield. Both these teams, you know, have something good. Miami, you know, they're looking to prove themselves. Texas A&M has to prove themselves. They have the talent. A&M does. Can they put it together? Miami's got to quiet those doubters. They, if they don't quiet those doubters, then, you know, what's the point? What's the point of even talking about Miami as a top 15 team? So there you have it. I know there's some other games that are pretty interesting as well, but, you know, we go over pretty much the top 25 around here. You know, some other games sprinkled in throughout. You know, I know there's some other interesting games, you know, on this third Saturday, uh, this third true September Saturday of the college football season. And until, you know, late at night probably it's probably going to be like 2 a.m. when I get the recap ready on Sunday so you know with is we're gonna we're gonna be hopping in and doing it um, I wonder how this week will go because there's a lot of key games here that a lot of people you know may not be looking at as key games but the, these are some key games in here early in the season because you wonder how some of these games are gonna go so until Tomorrow, we'll be talking to the NFL for week number two. I'm Big Boy Sports, signing out, and I'll see you later.